Hey everyone, this is Joe with Southeastern Frontiers. This is part two of my Bunyan Hill Road and Sipsy Fork Loop Trail backpacking trip in the Sipsy Wilderness. I'll include a link to the first part of this video above and in the description below. In this part, I start at my campsite near the big tree and I hike down to the Sipsy Fork of the Black Warrior River. Then I hike along the Sipsy Fork towards Fall Creek Falls. After stopping a bit at Fall Creek Falls, I pushed on to the Borden Creek and returned to my car parked at the Borden Creek Trailhead. I had intended to camp near Fall Creek Falls, but because I got an early start and made good time, I ended up turning my planned two-night trip into a one-night trip. Good morning. It is the morning of day two. I've got my coffee. Um, it's uh, warm and humid this morning, uh, kind of sticky, probably 70 degrees, but uh, but very humid, at least here in the canyon. Um, so I'm going to make myself some oatmeal for breakfast and uh, get things packed up and uh, we'll hit the trail in a bit. Uh, it is about 8.15 or so and I am all packed up. I'm going to uh, hit the trail. I only have about six miles to go today, so I'm not going to go too fast. Um, and I may go further than I plan. Just making sure I've got everything picked up. Don't want to leave anything. So uh, uh, I think I'm going to start first by seeing if I can get some good pictures at the Bee Branch Falls. From the top of the East Bee Branch Falls here, you can see the big tree right there, going up and up and up and up. And those are its, uh, its uh, crown right up there. Very cool. Climbing up out of the East Bee Branch Canyon is no joke. It is steep, but I've, uh, I could have went down instead of up. But I decided I'm going to go up to the top of the plateau and get back on trail 204 up there and uh, continue on that way. The mountain laurels are just starting to bloom. They will be gorgeous in a few more days. One of the things I love about hiking in the Sipsi is that as you descend down into the canyons or climb back out, you pass through a lot of ecological zones really quickly. You know, we went from fir trees at the bottom through the mountain laurel along the side, and now we're in the, the uh, hardwood forest at the top of the plateaus. Very cool. I have come back to trail 204. That's the way we came yesterday. And this is the way I'm gonna go today. So, down Trail 204. Eventually that should uh, take me to the uh, Sipsy Branch of the Black Warrior River. Um, I follow along this plateau and then I think it descends steeply down to the river. So off we go. We're approaching the uh, edge of the plateau here and uh, starting to see lots of mountain laurel again. Very pretty. Isn't that gorgeous? The laurels just don't quit along here. Kind of an overgrown trail though. <laughs> Lots of brush to hold back. All right, I have had my fill of mountain laurel. Very pretty flowers and all, but wow. I've been pushing through them for quite a while. That's uh, that's pretty annoying, but I think uh, I think now I'm going to descend down below them. Um, it's a really big tree right there, but uh, I think I'm heading down into this canyon here, and uh, that'll drop me down all the way to the Sipsy Branch. Yeah, this trail's pretty steep. I have come up it before. This is my first time ever going down it. 
I'm not looking forward to the wet, wet rocks that are going downhill, but uh, um, yeah, we've come down off the uh, cliff up there. That's where I came out of the laurels, is right along that cliff edge. And uh, we gotta descend down into the valley. This is a climb down on all fours sort of deal. <laughs> Woof. All right, now I, I think it's a little easier. Someone's been doing some construction under this overhang. Not exactly a leave no trace type approach. Unfortunately in the Sipsi, there's plenty of trace. Um, I tend to use established campsites just because I don't want to do any more damage than I already than has already been done. But uh, somebody has built this since the last time I went through here a couple of years ago. <sighs> wow. All right, we have reached Trail 209. So we just came down 204. That's what that sign's saying. 209 is that way. And that way, and there's a really nice little campsite right over here that uh, that I've uh, flagged before. Uh, I'm going to be going that way, but first I'm going to take a little break and and uh, sit down over here at this nice little campsite. All right, rest time over. Time to hit the trail. There are numerous small creek crossings along this trail, but most of them have been designed so that you don't have to get your feet wet. This is the first time I've gotten within sight of the Sipsy Fork of the Black Warrior River for a while. So it's flowing right along here. It's also a nice little breeze, which is helpful because it's warming up today. It is uh, warm today. As you can see, I'm sweating a bit, but the Sipsi's right there. So uh, it's very pretty and the forest is very nice as well. And I'll, I console myself with knowing that it's much cooler down here by the river than it would be up on the plateau. <laughs> Although I could sure use more of a breeze. Occasionally there's a little bit, but not much. So uh, I have my eye out now for looking for some place with good lunch potential. So uh, that's next on the agenda. All right, we have come up on the intersection with trail 202. As you can see on the sign, 202 crosses the Sipsy Fork and goes up on the other side. And if you follow that, it'll take you back to the uh, Randolph Wild Trailhead, I think. But we're not going that way today. I'm still looking for a good spot to have lunch. I was hoping they'd be here, but man, this is steep. Found what I was looking for. A big rock that I could sit on and uh, watch the Sipsy Fork roll by here. Now that I'm out of the trees, it's uh, there's a little bit of a breeze down here along the channel, which is nice. So I'm going to cool off and eat some lunch and rest for a while and uh, enjoy the, uh, the stream here. It is so clear. I'm having one of my favorite trail lunches, which is basically peanut butter mixed with honey. And uh, I will add some jelly to it in just a minute. And I usually put it on either pita bread or tortilla. Today it's pita. But it uh, doesn't look like much, but man, it's tasty. Look at the fish in the water. There's three of them. Kind of hard to see right now because they moved into the dark area there. But they're pretty big. I wish I had caught them a little bit sooner. There, now you can maybe see them a little better. All right, lunch break is over. It is probably time to get back on the trail, although I'm way ahead of schedule. <laughs> so I left earlier than planned this morning, been making good time. Um, so much for being leisurely, right? <laughs> I have a hard time with that sometimes. Well, this is kind of neat. 
a little side trail led up to this rock overhang where there's water running over it. <laughs> That's kind of pretty. It's sure nice and cool, like air conditioning. I think I'm going to use this as an opportunity to filter some water. Still following the Sipsy Fork. Now there are some big fish in this deep water here. Looks like two different kinds. Ones with the long pointy snouts. I don't know my fish types. <laughs> and then a more fish looking fish. Um, I'll have to look those up and see what they are. Some very pretty flowers along the trail this afternoon. Down trees are a constant reality along the trails in the Sipsi Wilderness. So you always are going over or under or around them. In this case, I have to choose, do I go under or do I go over? <laughs> I think I'm gonna try going over. And sometimes you gotta find your own way. Oh boy. It amazes me how in many places the trees are so big they fall all the way across the Sipsy Fork and uh, end up on this side. That was a big tree. Well, I've reached the uh, campground where I was going to spend the night tonight. This is one I visited before. Um, but it's only one o'clock in the afternoon. So I suspect after I rest a bit, I'm going to push on to a later campsite. Time for a break, some snacks, some water, and some rest. It's hot. So I planned this trip to be leisurely because I wasn't sure how many miles I could do after having been sick most of March with uh, COVID-19. So uh, I didn't want to push it too hard. But uh, I'm feeling pretty good other than I do have a couple blisters I just treated on my toes. They're not used to walking anymore. Um, but, uh, I'm going to push on and, and see how far I can get today. Wow, it looks like multiple trees went over here. There's some of those big fish with the long snouts. All right, we have come to Fall Creek Falls. Popular waterfall in the, in the Sipsi. Very nice. The trail here passes right in front of the waterfall. It's more impressive than the last time I was here, which was October, I think. It was only a trickle then. reached the I have reached the uh, junction with the Borden Creek uh, I will be leaving the Sipsy Fork behind now it's in the background there this is Borden Creek here in the foreground we've seen Borden Creek before so uh, trail 209 officially crosses right here you ford uh, Borden Creek and up on the other side you uh, join with trail 200 of the Borden Creek Trail which I'm very familiar with I've hiked it many many times um, about a quarter mile to the south 
is the uh, Sipsy picnic area and uh, big parking lot and restrooms. Um, but the Borden Bridge and my car is about three miles uh, north of this point. Um, the trail on the other side, on the uh, east side, Trail 200 is easy. And uh, if I crossed here, that would be an easier way to go. But I've never tried this trail on the west side. It's not a, an official trail. Um, and so I wanna see what there is to see. It's probably gonna be much harder going though. But uh, let's see, it's only two o'clock. So I think I'm gonna finish this up today. Um, and we'll call it a one night backpacking trip. Right over there, across the uh, Borden Creek, is where Greg and his son and I camped a week ago in my last video. So, getting close. So in my last video, I was commenting to, uh, to y'all that uh, the trees on this side of Borden Creek don't look like what you normally find in Alabama. And the trees on that side are more typical. Well, we're in those trees here. <laughs> So you can see there's fir trees dominating and uh, moss on all the uh, rocks underneath. It's very pretty, that's for sure. Wow, where the ferns grow. <laughs> Well, I found a small campsite, but I'm only about a mile away from the Borden Creek Bridge, so I'm pushing my way on out. It is exactly 3 p.m. So, well, this is a nice campsite if it was just, you know, for just me. It's a one, one tent site. You could maybe put two in. I don't know. It'd be tight. But, uh, but it overlooks the creek, and there's water running behind me, so uh, there's water nearby. Um, not too bad. We are essentially directly opposite the Fat Man Squeeze. You probably can't see it, but I can see the entrance over there on the other side, up kind of higher up. You can hear the waterfall that's on the uh, north end of the uh, Fat Man Squeeze. Getting close now. Next landmark should be the Borden Creek Bridge. There's the Borden Creek Bridge. Oh, I gotta climb up to it though. Uh. <laughs> and then there'll be a 230 foot climb back up to the car. But it's 4.30 <clears throat> and uh, I'll probably take a rest here first. Hydrate up. And then start the climb. Oh, the bridge. All right, rested a little. Drank absolutely all the water I had left. I considered going down to Borden Creek and refilling, but man, surely I can make it this quarter mile up to the car. <sighs> but it is 230 feet, but it's up a road and uh, I think I'll be fine. So we are basically there. Just, just got to get to the car now. Last leg of the journey. Yay, my car is still here. I think I'm going to hit a burger joint for something on the way home to eat.